Hi, Samantha. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, everyone in our Momlata community. We had some tech issues between Zoom and Facebook Live. So we are just going to record today. And if it goes live, awesome. If not, we will be posting up this recording for you. Our amazing franchise owner, Anna Marcoris in Parsippany, New Jersey, connected me with Samantha. So Samantha, if you could just introduce yourself, where you live, how many children you have, and a little bit about your background, and we'll dive into some questions today. Great. Thank you so much for having me, Kristen. And thank you to Anna for connecting us. Um, so I am a speech pathologist. I've worked with um, people of all ages. Currently, though, I work in the early intervention system. So I work with families of um, one and two year olds who are a little bit delayed with their speech and language. And I work with the families on improving their communication together through strategies, coaching, um, all kinds of different ways to improve their their language skills. Personally, I'm a mom. I have a four-year-old named Milo and a one-and-a-half-year-old named Elliot, and I'm expecting a little girl in June. So we got our hands full here. That's <laughs> impressive. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing some of the tips that I share with my my families through work with your audience today. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited. So one thing that we talked about before we connected today was like, what does work look like for you right now? Because obviously a lot has changed for all of us in the last four weeks. So, you know, what was like work life before work like before for you? Um, what was your schedule, especially with such a big family and another one on the way that's so right. amazing. Like what was life like before as far as work and family and then like how has it shifted right now? Yeah, so um, beforehand I was working four short days a week. So I dropped the boys off around nine, nine o'clock. I'd work from 9.30 to two and uh, pick them up around 2.30. So it was a lot, but I enjoyed kind of the balance because I got to spend a significant amount of time working and a significant amount of time home with the boys. Um, you know, it's a lot doing both, but I enjoyed the, the balance there. Um, now, the agency I work for offers telehealth services to our families, but a lot of the families have declined at this point. So I have only about three families that I'm seeing, that I'm doing sessions with online. Um, so some are even after the boys go to sleep. I have a couple in the afternoons, but it's a lot of mom time right now. Yeah. <laughs> it can be a lot, you know? Um, my husband's home, but he's working full time. Um, so he pops in when he can, but it's been um, a lot of energy, especially being so pregnant. <laughs> yes. So I'm trying once a day to at least get my feet up for a little while. <laughs> Good. Good. Is the weather okay that you guys can get out? For a yeah, while? today's actually beautiful. Yesterday was kind of a storm, but um, so far it's been pretty nice. And even when it's not, we try to get out as much as possible. I'm sure the boys need that. <laughs> yes, and mama needs that too. <laughs> so true. So fresh so air and sunshine. Yeah. Well, what are the, I'd love to learn a little bit more about the age ranges that you work with specifically. Um, you know, are they school-aged children? Does it go all the way up through 12th grade? Like, tell me yeah, a little bit so, about that. Um, I actually kind of specialize on the spectrums of of um, age. So mm -hmm. a lot of my work has been with older adults and also younger adults, but the adult population, people who have, who have suffered strokes, brain injuries, um, people who have progressive neurological diseases. Um, but most recently I've worked in uh, the birth to three population. So hey. um, the, most of my clients are one and two years old. Um, and some of these children will pro likely go on to have a diagnosis of autism. Some of these children um, are just delayed in their language skills. Some have some speech concerns. And at this age, it's a lot of parent coaching. So, um, you know, there are things that you do hands on with the child, but the child's going to get the most out of it if you teach the parents what you're doing and how to incorporate those strategies into their everyday routines. That's terrific. Well, you know, we have such a range of ages of children for the moms that are in our mom community. So, mm -hmm. I mean, 
you're, well, you and I are a perfect example to tell you the truth. So I have a 16 and an 18 year old, right? And you've got two little boys plus a third one on the way. So like speak, knowing that you're speaking to moms with children of all ages and stages, like what are some tips? I mean, I don't know if you want to narrow in and say, okay, if your child has not started school, this is a good place to get some things to look for because I am amazed that you're working with families you know, from birth. Yeah, so um, in, in general, there's so many things that a speech pathologist works on with, with children. So, um, you know, there are language skills, there's speech, the way our sounds come out, there's literacy, there's thought organization, there's um, our executive functioning skills, which are like planning and organizing. Um, so a, a child, you know, a school age child, for example, might have lots of these other areas that impact their, their school and their, their relationships that they might be working with a speech therapist. Um, for children that I work with, my number one tip is to talk more with them, right? Or to talk more even just around them. The more language that a child hears, the more language that they're going to learn, the more vocabulary they'll learn, the quicker they'll learn how to put words together. So um, that might be just narrating what you're doing throughout the day, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like a special time that you sit down and say, now I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> you know, it's something that you just do during your day. So like, oh, look, mommy has an apple. Oh, I'm gonna cut the apple. Here's my knife, cut, cut, cut. Do you want some apple? Juicy apple. Yeah, that's how you might talk to a two-year-old, for example. Right. Um, I don't, I don't uh, recommend talking to your 10-year-old like that. <laughs> but, um, you know, just lots of um, language stimulation, a li rich language environment is really the, the best tip, overarching tip I can give, especially of moms of young children. So this sounds like it's just kind of bringing it into daily life and being intentional with it versus like, okay, we're going to sit down and read a book now. Right. Exactly. And that, that's the, the biggest piece that um, parents need to understand is that you don't have to have special materials, special toys, a special time of day. Language is something that is all around us all the time. So, um, you know, parents are probably already doing a ton to support their child's language development. But with that little bit of intentionality, like you said, you can really... Um, give a, a boost and, and make sure that you're, you're giving a lot of opportunities for your child to learn and practice their language. Yeah. I'm curious to know, do you do any work with the school system um, in what you do? So I don't right now. I have worked in schools in the past. Um, right now I work for an agency that contracts with the state-run early intervention program. Mm -hmm. So I go into, <clears throat> excuse me, I go into families' homes um, and I work with them in their natural environment and try to show parents how to incorporate different tips and strategies into their daily routines. That's great. You know, I have to say, so when my son, he's, he's now uh, 16, when he was in elementary school, uh, the speech pathologist at our kid's school uh, was getting uh, tacos and my kids were there with their babysitter and um, she she contacted me afterwards and she said, I think we should try to get your son into some speech therapy. And it's so interesting as a parent, you know, this isn't my field. I, we didn't hear anything or, or think anything was wrong, except, you know, seeing how his teeth were coming in, like someday he might need braces, which he now has <laughs> braces. Um, but if it wasn't for her, you know, being outside of her normal environment at school, I don't know that she would have had an opportunity to have a conversation with him, pick up on the things that her training has taught her. Mm -hmm. And then the support from the school system, we had two and a half years That's good. during the course of his school to, for him to have support because she wanted him to improve before he got to middle school and potentially was, you know, made fun of by other kids. And now mm -hmm. even as a um, as a high school student, he is aware with his braces, his teeth are changing, it's affecting how he speaks. Like he's so, he's not embarrassed, he's just aware. So mm -hmm. we were very lucky, not just that this situation happened and she got to hear him and she reached out to us, mm -hmm. but also that the school had this type of support. So what advice can you give to parents who maybe 
you know, don't know what to look, look, look out for with their children. Yeah, so um, there's different, like I said, different areas that a speech pathologist might, might work with your child on. Um, if, I'll kind of go through different ages, if that's okay. So mm -hmm. if we're looking at um, toddlers, little ones like I work with, um, we want to look at different areas. We want to look at their social skills. Are they interested in others? Are they able to um, pay attention to something exciting or new? Are they, um, will they take turns if you smile at them? Will they smile back at you? Things like that. They're kind of social skills first. Then we want to look at what they're understanding. So can your one-year-old follow a one-step command? Like, um, go get your shoes. Can your two-year-old follow a two-step command? Um, go get your shoes and give them to daddy. Yeah. Um, can your three-year-old follow a three-step command? So a lot of um, what a child can say kind of is based on what they're able to understand first. Interesting. Uh, and then we, you know, what I think a lot of parents kind of jump right to is, is my child talking, right? That one's kind of obvious for a lot of parents. They say, oh, well, you know, neighbor's kid's talking, but my little one isn't. Actually, okay. my comparison is yes. so hard, isn't it? It's so it's hard. hard. And even between two children, Milo, my four-year-old, was an early talker. He's one and a half. He's talking in two and three word phrases, you know, tons of words. Elliot is... Um, What's the date? It's, he's almost 20 months. <laughs> Where am I? Um, and he really just in the last couple of weeks, his language has kind of taken off, but he only has maybe 20 words right now, 25 words. So, you know, for the last few months, I've been like, well, come on, Elliot, let's go. <laughs> right? I expect you're like hyper aware of these. Oh, right, words. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, you know, even a child who, who is a little bit delayed, um, most children do catch up, even on their own. Um, that said, you're, you don't know if your child's gonna be one of those that catches up. So I always recommend if you have any sort of concerns, having your child evaluated by a speech pathologist. Um, because we know, you know what, is a, what looks like kind of a normal delay and what has maybe some red flags that there's something else going on. Um, and for our parents who do have school-aged children, yeah. <laughs> not in today's environment, but you know, when we're back in school or, you know, even if there's a resource to call at the school board, I mean, is that a, a place to start? Would you yeah. expect nationwide that most parents would have access to some type of support through their, their public schools? Yeah, so every public school has a speech pathologist. Um, if you have any concerns about your child, now it could be how they're pronouncing a certain sound. And, you know, I won't go through every sound, but there's, um, certain developmental norms at different ages, right? So if your kindergartner is not really nailing that R sound, it's probably okay, right? The speech pathologist might say, let's wait on that. But if they're not consistently getting a good P or T sound or even a K sound, they might want to do an evaluation. So um, it's important to, to reach out to your, teach, to your child's teacher who can reach out to the speech pathologist for sure. Um, to have them assessed because um, that's something that can get harder as the child gets older for sure. Uh, even, but in the schools, they, they work on more than just speech. They often work on um, language skills that can Im impact, <clears throat> excuse me, a child's academic success. So building vocabulary, um, uh, organizing how they might um, put their words together. Um, fluency, some children may have like a stutter. Uh, there's a lot of different areas of language that a school speech pathologist might, might be working on. Usually in the schools, they ha can only work on skills that impact their academic success. Okay. So sometimes that can be a little bit tricky if there's something that um, the parent notices, but the child is doing great in school, they might not qualify in the school setting. So that might be a time where um, the parent would have to seek private speech therapy services. Okay. Um, I'm curious to know if, because you know, all of us are spending more time with our children <laughs> than <laughs> normal. Um, do you have some resources that you can share in our Momletta community? 
Um, like you mean other resources or I do not even know where to start. If I had a first grader who's uh -huh. normally at school for six hours or more a day and now we're home together 24 seven and mm -hmm. I wanted to work on some language skills or just see if my child is where they should be for their grade and the teacher's not mentioned anything and we're not going to school to have a conversation about this. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even know where to start. I would just start, you know, searching on Google. You know. Well, I would I would say try not to overcomplicate it, right? Okay. Doing um, task things together that are fun for your child or kind of part of your everyday normal routine, and just kind of emphasizing the language aspect is a really good place to start. Um, so, that, especially for younger children, that might be just including them in your daily chores. You know, folding laundry together and talking about what's bigger and smaller and what goes in daddy's drawer and what we take out of the bin, things like that, just everyday language. Um, cooking together and talking about the sequence of the steps. Do they seem a little confused by that? Um, or is that something that they, they can stick to stay with you on? Um, you know, mopping the floor, and things that you have to do anyway, keeping your kids with you during those everyday routines is a really good way to Kind of um, enrich their language environment too if you're talking about what you're doing. Um, for children who are, um, well really for any age children, one activity that I love for language is scavenger hunts. So, <clears throat> and it can really be tailored for any age. So if you have a one-year-old or a two-year-old, you might print out some pictures of everyday objects and go around and try to find them. You know, a hairbrush, a microwave, a chair, kind of basic things. Um, for children who are a little bit older, you might give them um, some, like a description, like, oh, let's see if we can find something bumpy, or let's see if we can find something cold. <clears throat> um, children who are even older and more uh, advanced in their language skills, you can give them like a, a clue, a hint, like, um, this is something we cook spaghetti in, and they have to go find the the pot and maybe you put a sticker there beforehand so that when they find it they they have a prize or they know that they found what you're looking for so scavenger hunts are a really fun way to work on language um, games where children have to listen and process is always are always um, good for those receptive language skills so again it varies with the child's age so um, a, you know, a younger child, you might play Simon Says, or you might do a craft and give them steps that they have to do, um, build a paper airplane together, things like that, where they have to process and listen to the information and follow the instructions. That's really helpful. So um, do you, I guess, once you were talking, I started thinking about like parents who are from different countries, right? So, or speak different languages. Uh -huh. How does that influence what a child is hearing? I mean, Ooh, I love that question. <laughs> British, you would think we uh -huh. speak the same language, but our children, like they pronounce things differently and they, they know that now at school, like they say things differently than <laughs> some of their American friends. Uh -huh. I, and I love that interaction of different languages and accents. I think it's so yeah. cool. I correct well, him all the time and he says it's called English for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> we started it. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I, children's brains are wired to learn multiple languages. So if you have um, a, a child, you know, in our country, people tend to speak one language and it's kind of unfortunate. You know, we can't communicate with as many people in the world. If you go to Europe, a lot of people grow up speaking three or four languages. Um, the best way to um, raise a bilingual child is to have really um, distinct language models. So mom only speaks English, dad only speaks Spanish. Okay. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Not going back and forth between languages. Uh, most children will sort it out on their own eventually, but it, the, the ideal way to do it is to have um, a language model for each language that the child is learning. Okay. That makes sense. But uh, bilingual, bilingual brains are amazing, you know, to, it, are. it only enriches a child to know more than one language. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. It's a shame that we don't, you know, have multilingual 
focus in America. Yeah. Um, so how does that affect a child, you know, in the developmental years, if they're hearing another language or even another type of pronunciation of English? Like, yeah. So it's interesting because the research is really ongoing about this. When I was in grad school, I learned that uh, bilingual children tend to speak later. Now, the research is showing that that's not really true, that if you count all the words that a child knows in both languages, so even if, you know, they say apple and manzana in English and Spanish, but um, we would count that as two separate words. So if you count all the words a child's really saying, then um, bilingual children tend to develop on pace with their monolingual counterparts. That's the newer research. Wow. So it, it, it doesn't um, have any negative impacts. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you have any parting words of advice or guidance for our moms before we wrap things up? Um, you know, I, I really wanna just emphasize that you don't have to be doing anything amazing and special to be helping your child with their language, that you're probably already doing a ton just being with them more. Um, the, the main things that I would like parents to do while we're spending all this extra time together is talk, 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 right? Provide a really language rich environment. Um, talk about what you notice out the window. Talk about what your, you know, the, the food that you're prepping or the clothes that you're folding or the, the toy that their child's playing with. The more you talk, the more your child can um, start to make sense of those words. Um, reading together every day for younger children is super important. Um, keeping up a daily routine, at least in my family, I found has been very important. But that um, lets children kind of anticipate the words that they're going to hear and gives them, again, more opportunities to make those connections. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, do new things, try new activities, get outside, um, expose your children to new concepts and words but it doesn't have to be like a special time that you're doing speech with them. Um, just the, the act of you being there and, and loving on them and talking to them is just gonna enrich their, their um, language skills so much. My big takeaway from hearing you, oh gosh, and I wish I knew this stuff 18 years ago when I had children, but I just feel like what I've learned is language is life, like just, make it a part of your life. Yeah. You know, I remember that when our children were infants that, you know, we'd speak to them like we're having a conversation with an adult and we'd laugh at ourselves and then just be like, well, this is what feels normal to us. Even uh -huh. though they're not speaking back, we don't know if they understand us, but we're just. Speaking. And it doesn't feel normal to every mom to talk to your kid. So for, you know, some moms, you got to kind of push yourself a little bit. And even if it feels a little silly, talk to your little one, you know, all day long. Um, it's only going to only going to help their their development. Yep. Well, that's great. Well, I just want to thank you so much, Samantha, for your time today. It was great to get to know you a little bit more, and I'm so excited for you with your third pregnancy. Thank I you. <laughs> well, when you, when did you say you're due? June 10th. Oh my goodness, coming up. Well, yeah. <laughs> Before I wish you all the best with the rest of your pregnancy you. and managing life as we currently know it. <laughs> and uh, just want to thank you again for sharing with us. Thank all you for having me on. This was really fun. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. You too. All right. I'm going to stop the recording here.